networking fundamentals. We're going to be going over the basics of the OSI model, talk a little bit about IP subnetting, which we will get into further in a later video, basic network communication internal to our LAN and WAN communication, and we're going to take a look at following the packet, what happens to information as it goes from one source to a particular destination. Let's go in and talk about that OSI model. OSI stands for Open Systems Interconnection. It was established in 1982 by the International Organization for Standardization. And they came up with a seven layer communication model. And basically, the seven layers are requirements for two machines to be able to communicate with each other, how to package the data, everything like that. In a TCP IP network, there is what's called the four layer TCP IP model. I've also heard it called the DOD model. And they break the seven layers up into four functional layers for each type of protocol that would be used. Layers five, six, and seven basically map to what would be called the application layer in the four layer model. The transport layer is still called the transport layer. The network layer is called the internet layer. And the bottom two layers are called the network interface or network access layers. Now, what happens is we have protocols written to carry out certain things. An application protocol such as FTP or HTTP would make sure that these three requirements are being met. Application, you've got to have some sort of application, functioning, presentation, everything's got to be in the appropriate format, session, you must establish a session in communication before transferring the data, FTP or HTTP, both make sure those three requirements are met. So there's one protocol making sure those three requirements are met. That protocol, that application protocol, is represented inside the packet by what is called a port number. So the port number identifies the application layer protocol. At the transport layer with IP, we have typically TCP or UDP. There is a number that tells us, or that represents, TCP or UDP in the packet. And that number is called a protocol number. Then between the network and the data link layer, and actually this is what the logical link control portion of the data link layer handles, it's called a service access point. And that puts the type field into a packet to tell the receiving device to use IP or IPX to open the packet, depending on what layer three protocol was used. So there's a service access point identifying the layer three protocol. So the layer three communication protocol is identified by the service access point. The layer four protocol, like TCP or UDP, is identified by the protocol number. And then the application layer protocol like FTP or HTTP is identified by a port number. What I want to do is take a look at what's going to happen to a packet as it goes from one place to another and see what happens with this OSI model and how it interacts with a packet while traveling through different devices. Let me bring up a slide. I've brought up a network diagram and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what it takes for computer A over here to transfer something or upload something to the FTP server in this subnet here. We have two local area networks separated by a wide area network connection. So what do we need for this computer to be able to communicate with this server? First thing we're going to need is addressing. And a very popular type of addressing would be IP addressing. So what IP addressing do we need? 
Now the first thing we need to know is what subnets or network addresses we're going to be falling under. And just for demonstration purposes, we'll say that this entire environment is network 20.0.0.0 with a slash 8 subnet mask. So what we need to do is we need to figure out how to address all of these systems and have them all be a part of network 20.0.0.0. That's where the subnetting comes in. Every different broadcast domain, and we've got three of them. Here's one broadcast domain. Here's another broadcast domain, and probably a lot of broadcast domains within there. But anyway, we'll just consider this one subnet. And then we've got another subnet here. So we've got three subnets going on, subnet 1, subnet 2, subnet 3. So we need to chop network 20 up into three different subnets. To be able to do that, all I do is I start breaking everything down into binary. So I make sure I've got the first octet is 20. I don't need to break that into binary because that's not going to change. I can't change this number because if I do, I'm using somebody else's network. That's not good. And I'm going to leave the last octet just as zero. Uh, I can write out the rest of them. Don't be lazy like me. When you're doing subnetting, if you need to, break it into binary. So what I need to do is I need to section off part of the node portion of network 20 and make it part of the network portion. And I need enough binary spaces to be able to represent three different combinations of zeros and ones because I've got three subnets. If I have one binary space, I've got two possible combinations of zeros and ones. If I have two binary spaces, I've got four possible combinations of zeros and ones. That's a one, one right there, not zero, zero. So this is zero, zero, zero one, zero, zero, one, and one one four different combinations of zeros and ones now that's fine except standard subnetting says don't use all zeros and don't use all ones even though technically I can so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we need three binary spaces to be safe to give us enough different combinations of zeros and ones what that does each binary space with two different combinations gives us two times two times another two eight total combinations of zeros and ones which is more than enough to get three subnets out of and here are our combinations zero 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 one zero one zero zero one 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 zero zero one zero one 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 zero and let's write that up here one 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 this is quickly becoming a mess so what I do is I extend my subnet mask out three places and it fits nicely with that equation. 2 to the n minus 2 is you can't use all zeros, can't use all ones. This 2 says if I have one binary space, I have a total of two possible options. The n is the number of binary spaces. So what we're looking at is 2 to the 3 minus 2 is equal to 6, which is more than enough to get our three subnets out of. So by extending the subnet mask out three places, I have now designated these three bits that are normally part of the host portion as part of the network portion. And my first subnet is this right here. I just turn that bit on and I've got my first subnet. So subnet 1 is 20 dot, and what is this number? It is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. 20 dot 32 dot 0 dot 0 for this subnet. This subnet right here would be one zero combination. It's going in increments of 32, 20.64.0.0. And then the last one would be one one right there, which would be 20.96.0.0. The new subnet mask would be we would be using is 255.224. Dot zero, dot zero, that's the new subnet mask, or you could also call it slash 11, 8, 9, 10.